There are many terms used to describe learning that is delivered online via the internet, ranging from distance education to computerized electronic learning, online learning, and many more. However, conventionally, courses that are specifically delivered through the internet or than the classroom with a physical tutor will be largely classified as e-learning. In this report, PLOS TV Africa's Elsie Godwin explores how e-learning impacts on education during this lockdown and moving forward. Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana and other countries in different parts of Africa are on lockdown due to coronavirus. Globally, the health sector has been recognized as the hardest hit during this pandemic. But one other sector largely affected is education. The situation makes it absolutely impossible for schools dependent on conventional methods of learning to function. Students whose schools are situated in states affected by the lockdown have their education set on pause. When this social distancing thing started with the lockdown, you know, the kids have not been able to get quality education, like schooling stopped. I understand that, of course, this COVID-19 thing is more important, but schooling is also important. They can't just be wasting their time at home. You know, yeah, people will say, eh, they're your children, bring, them, eh, bring out their booze, give them exercises, give them more work. I am not a teacher, please. However, the case is different for students in developed climates. Learning has not stopped as lectures and teaching are ongoing using digital tools. Somewhere in Japan, graduation was done via Skype. There is no so much changes made to the academic calendar. The only change is that classes have now been moved online. And then um, pressure, assignment pressure, because now for most people, they have to change their assignment topic or project topic because of access to people. We have this. All right, joining us in the studio is Plots TV Africa's Elsie Goldwyn. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining us. Okay, how important is an exploration of um, e-learning and regularizing it, especially now uh, in this lockdown? Um, I, I, it is very important, definitely. But now I don't think this is even the time for us to start what we have not done over the years. I think this is the time for us to look at after COVID. Because if you are talking about e-learning right now, especially in Nigeria, then um, I can tell you that most of the students from um, most universities that I've spoken to have said that they are just at home waiting for when it's going to be over, coupled with the ASU strike that is ongoing. So it's just um, a case, a, a sorry case in that aspect. However, it's also interesting to note that um, secondary schools, as we call them here, have more e-learning um, opportunities and tools set in place. Are these tools effectively used right now? Um, well, one can argue that, but however, you can see the rise uh, in the penetration when it comes to the secondary education. All right. Um, what else did you discover in the course of um, putting out this report? Well, in the course of putting out this report, you realize that these students are actually eager to learn. They want to move forward. They are not happy um, with being at home and hoping that, I mean, we don't know when COVID is going to end. There's been an extension of the lockdown for another two weeks. That's adding to the previous two weeks and some states have been on partial lockdown before um, the federal government stepped in. That's um, more than a month already. And other climbs are not waiting. The education is moving on in other parts of the world. So it's a case of you losing that part of your life and hoping that it, you, you, you catch up somehow. However, um, I also spoke to people that are actively involved in imp um, implementing ICT in Nigeria and in Africa, and they're saying that the conversation is ongoing. However, we have infrastructural issues that are making it almost impossible for them to penetrate. We're talking of power, we're talking of data um, affordability, we're talking of even the, the, the quality of internet you get to use. We're talking of um, discrimination when it comes to online learning certificates. I, I mean, in Nigeria, you already have discrimination when you do what we term as part-time, and then when you see someone who went to the school physically to spend These time. These are all you know? pre-existing so, conditions. You know, so so we have a new challenge. What are they saying about how we can explore what we do have within our limited resources to ensure mm -hmm. that our pupils and our students don't lag behind? Yeah. You, 
you cannot just start exploring right now. What you can start talking about now is what can we do post COVID? Because right now you you don't Even expect before anyone post COVID. They need to learn. They need now. to start. They need to learn now. But when you don't have the tools available, how do you teach them? You you have not set up anything that would enable the teachers to even be able to teach. The teachers themselves also need to be trained to be able to teach. When you, when it comes to ICT um, learning. It's not just about having those tools. The teachers are comfortable and have been trained to teach in classes. Have they been trained to be able to use these tools to teach the students? So if you say, um, if for maybe by some miracle you say we can have these tools um, available in the schools, which I do not see that happening, but if that is going to happen, are the teachers um, equipped enough to make that possible? So our challenges are, are, are quite um, dicey and um, the conversation is now post-COVID, what will happen and if there is anything that can be done now, then yes, we can start putting them in place to make sure that if there is another pandemic or whatever the case may be, we will not be uh, um, at the tail, tail, tail end of the receiving end. Thank you very much, Elsie, for coming on Thank the news. Thank you for having me.